In last class, I was discussing about uh, effect of different process parameter on metal transfer only. And at the end of last lecture, I was discussing uh, categories of uh, different uh, welding efficiency. Uh, there, I was discussing at the end of that lecture, I was discussing about heat source efficiency. And I finished also heat source efficiency. There, we observed that heat source efficiency generally varied pro, uh, from welding process to welding process. It was observed that, uh, that heat source efficiency depending upon the heat source type, it efficiency can vary from 10 percent to around 99 percent. There we observed about heat source efficiency. And, uh, at the, and another efficiency also was uh, there uh, that is called melting efficiency or that is also called heat transfer efficiency. Today first of all, I will discuss about uh, melting efficiency, heat transfer efficiency in detail. Uh, after that actually I will discuss about effect of process parameter in well quality. That means, last class I was discuss about effect of process parameter only one what it is called uh, metal transfer. So, in today's lecture I will discuss about effect of different operating or uh, process parameter on well quality as well as deposition rate and uh, uh, well uh, deposition rate, well bit geometry in details. So, the, this is the uh, content of today's lecture that means, first of all I will discuss about the melting efficiency or this is also called heat transfer efficiency and another one is welding parameters and their effect on weld quality, quality of welding. So, last class I have already discussed about uh, heat source efficiency, there we observe that uh, the heat source efficiency is the ratio uh, between the heat uh, in arc that means, heat supplied to arc by heat by power source that means, arc heat uh, divided by that means, heat uh, transfer from arc to work piece that means, work pit work divided by work piece heat. That means, this ratio generally all the uh, heat generally we observe that all the heat is not uh, transferred from arc to uh, work piece. There is some losses occur that losses due to convection, conduction, radiation or some other losses can be there. Due to that things all the heat is not transferred from uh, arc to uh, arc to the uh, work piece material. So, that is why there is used some term that is called heat source efficiency. Heat source efficiency means uh, that also we can heat source efficiency we are representing by uh, that means, eta ACS that way we represent it. Now, today we will discuss about the melting efficiency or heat, heat transfer efficiency. This melting efficiency is the ability of the heat source to melt the base metal as well as filler material actually this is represent. That means, he, this melting efficiency actually whatever the heat is transferring from heat source to work piece that all heat of work piece is not required to melt the base material and filler material. Here generally there can be some excess of heat will be there. That means here actually what are so, so or whatever the heat required to weld, here the heat required to weld is generally we have to melt the base material and what happens as well as filler material. For that whatever the heat is required that is sufficient to generally do the welding. But what happens whatever the heat supplying from arc, all the heat is not utilized uh, for what is called melting the parent material or work piece or melting the and uh, melting the electrode. So, here some excess of heat generally can be there. Based on this thing generally what happens? Here generally we use uh, melting efficiency, uh, uh, melting efficiency or we, can, we use generally heat transfer efficiency. This melting efficiency also it is called as heat transfer efficiency, heat transfer efficiency. What does it means? this heat transfer efficiency? Heat transfer efficiency means that, that the, this we can write that this is the ratio of heat required to melt the base material as well as uh, what it is called filler material divided by heat supply to work piece. That means, whatever the heat supply from arc to work piece that will be here uh, in denominator and top of the ratio will be the heat required to melt the base material as well the filler material. So, what we can write actually this melting efficiency or we can say heat transfer efficiency, it is the generally what is what, what is the what, it, what does it means? 
it is generally heat require this we can write is require required to melt the base and filler material divided by what we can write heat supply heat supply to the workpiece workpiece that means heat supply or we can say heat absorb to the work this two ratio generally is called generally melting ratio how we can represent these things this portion generally represent that means heat required to melt the base material that means heat required to rise the temperature of base material from room temperature to its melting point and melt it this generally this portion represent that thing and this the second portion represent that heat required to melt the filler material it required to raise the temperature from room temperature to melting point temperature of filler material and melt and melt it just whatever the heat is required for that means to rise temperature from room temperature to melting point of base material as well as filler material uh, require is generally used in top of that uh, efficiency and below of this generally represented the what it's called uh, heat supplied uh, from arc to work piece that means how much heat is coming to work piece so this is generally this how much heat is coming to work piece that we can easily find out that is generally that is represented in terms of q divided by e i that we have uh, already we have discussed heat source efficiency is, is equal to the this heat absorbed to work piece divided by e i so from here generally q w we can re represented as eta h s into e i that we can write so this part will be this eta h s here we can write this is eta h s e i generally t well represent generally heat required actually eta is so this eta is with if we multiply with this thing with welding time then we generally get the heat that that generally eta e i is power once we multiply with this thing with time of weld because uh, then it is generally converted to uh, heat heat energy so generally this heat, this welding time is multiplied with both top and bottom that's why this this generally can be eliminated so this weld time because everywhere there is welding time here is welding times here is also welding time and here is also below also so this can be cancelled out and how we calculate this second term of this uh, of this heat energy that we can calculate by checking the cross section view of weld bit generally once we cut the cross section then there we can we, we can get uh, the overall cross section view of molten metal zone so then this molten metal zone let's uh, this portion represent the uh, cross sectional area represent top portion represent the cross sectional area of filler material and let's this below portion represent the cross sectional area of the what it's called base material so let's this base material melting region is this mass portion and filler material deposition uh, portion is uh, this top portion so uh, so here generally a filler that means area of filler material and a base means area of base material this we can get easily from where uh, from the what it's called from the cross sectional view, view of uh, welded section because from cross section view by cutting and polishing it this this area we can easily uh, visualize so once we get this area then if with this area if we just multiply with velocity and time then area into velocity and time means length this velocity and time represent v into t represent generally length of weld so what happens if we know this cross sectional area of this base material this v and t represent this length of the weld so cross sectional area into length of weld represent what that volume of weld actually this terms from this to this represent what represent the volume of what what it skill volume of uh, generally base material melted base material material similarly from this parenthesis uh, portion generally represent volume of volume of filler material melted filler material 
material melted. This generally represents this. Okay. That we can easily get from here. Now, if we just with this volume, if we multiply this, might uh, multiply this, uh, this age base. What is this age base? This age base is the energy required per unit volume of base material to rise temperature from uh, what it's called room temperature to uh, melting point temperature of base material and melt it. Then, if we just multiply, this is generally per unit volume energy requirement. So, if we just uh, multiplying this unit volume energy required with total volume of base material, then we will get the total energy required for melting of base material from room temperature to uh, that means melting of base material. Generally, in second portion also we, we have this parenthesis region 1 generally represent the volume of filler material. This volume of filler material once we multiply it with uh, this H filler, here H filler represent the energy required per unit volume of filler material to rise temperature from room temperature to melting point temperature of filler material and just melt it. Rest of the heat, whatever the excess is heat is there, that is not actually utilizing here. Only the energy required to rise temperature from room temperature to melting point temperature and just melt it. So, this generally represents, so this parenthesis region A filler into V into T well represent the volume of filler material deposited uh, during welding time. Uh, once we multiply with this energy required for unit volume of filler material, then we get total energy required uh, in case of filler material to rise temperature from room temperature to melting point temperature. So, this we can easily find out. And what is this thing? This denominator, this thing represent the whatever the heat is supplied from arc to work piece. That we can easily calculate from heat source efficiency. Now, here one thing you should remember that means, we can easily get this total cross sectional area from uh, microstructural uh, observation, this total cross sectional area. But among this total cross sectional area, what will be the filler material area and what will be the base material area that is little bit difficult to uh, distinguish. For that reason, uh, but, but this total cross sectional area can be easily measured. Here total cross sectional area that means, total a weld area is the area of filler material and area of base material. This total we can measure easily, but what happens this filler zone and base material zone this distinguishing is little bit difficult. That is why if we can get one, any one portion of this uh, cross section and then rest of the portion of cross section we can sub subtract from this total cross sectional area that we can easily find out. So, here generally area of this filler material cross sectional area, we can find out by using this following formula. What is this formulation? This is the volume of filler material, but we do not know exactly what is the cross sectional area of filler material. That we have to find out. How to find out this thing? Generally, this filler material is supplied by the means uh, consumable electrode. Generally, consumable electrode, generally consumable electrode is generally let this is the electrode, this is generally continuously feed this is generally continuously feed by this uh, feed roller mechanism, generally some feed roller or manually also it can be done. So, what happens once it is in a feed roller mechanism, there we know what is the speed of this fill uh, that means, speed of this consumable electrode, because what happens depending upon this. So, speed of the consumable electrode means consumption of the filler material deposition we can calculate by using this speed of the filler material speed or feed rate. This is speed actually called generally feed rate, feed rate of electrode, feed rate of consumable electrode. This generally can be automatically we can set it in welding operation. This is known to us that means, feed is speed of known to us and we know the diameter of the electrode also. So, if we know this diameter of the electrode, then what happens if we know the, uh, if we know the what it is called? feed rate that means, the speed of consumable electrode, then we can easily calculate what is the volume of, what is the volume of filler wire deposited that we can easily find out. That we can easily find out generally by pi d square 4, this cross sectional area of the uh, these things into length of the filler wire. This velocity actually represent velocity of filler wire or you can say V filler this we can represent as of V filler or feed rate speed or feed rate we can say. So, this we can easily, this we can easily measure, 
this is here representing generally in terms of phi r square cross sectional area of this consumable electrode and V filler represent the feed rate or speed of the filler wire and during welding time if we multiple this represent the total length of total length of total length of electrode total length of electrode this we can represent Le. So, this is known to us. So, we know everything from here R filler velocity that means feed rate of the filler wire and we also know the know the welding speed. So, we know everything here. So, we can easily calculate what should be the cross sectional area of filler wire. So, if we can able to calculate this filler wire cross sectional area then from this well cross sectional area if we just subtract this area of filler wire then we can get how much area of base material what is the cross sectional area of base material are there that we can easily find out because this is known to us and this is also known to us from uh, microstructural study total cross sectional area. So, thus if we subtract this thing we can get easily this base material cross sectional. So, here we got this cross sectional area of base material as well as cross sectional area of filler material and rest of the thing is known to you that means the speed of welding speed we know we know welding time. So, we can easily calculate this melting efficiency easily, this melting efficiency easily. Now, here generally we have we will discuss about what is the effect of all these different welding parameters on well quality. That means, well quality means here well quality means bit geometry, welding strength, deformation, uh, deformation or distortion of welding and what happens it is penetration. So, overall quality of the welding what this uh, different welding parameter affects that I will discuss now. Generally here one thing you keep it in mind well quality and well deposition rate both are influenced by generally various welding parameters and joint geometry. This generally this well quality and deposition rate is depends on different welding parameters and another things joint geometry about joint geometry generally I have already discussed in initial some lecture I was discussed about uh, this joint geometry what are the different types of joint geometry are there generally that I was already discussed. Now, here I will discuss in details about different welding parameters effects on quality of welding as well as deposition rate in details. What is these parameters? This welding parameter especially uh, the major welding parameters which affect the weld quality then well bead geometry, uh, deposition rate, these major welding parameters are generally as follows. Like here it can be welding current, it is generally arc voltage, welding speed, electrode feed rate, length of stick out or electrode extension, this is also called extension, electrode diameter and third then last parameter generally is called joint geometry. So, each and every welding parameters details and joint geometry details I will discuss in the subsequent slide. There we will see what is the effect of these different parameters in well, overall well quality. First of all I will discuss about welding current. So, before going to welding current generally whatever the uh, parameter I have uh, shown above this parameter generally affect the fol following generally what is the effect of this uh, parameters if, if it is varying it generally these parameters affects the deposition rate, it affects on well bit shape, it is effect on depth of penetration, it is effects on cooling rate and it is effects on well induced distortion. That means, whatever the parameter I have told you uh, previously that parameter have this effect, these are the following effect of that thing. So, what happens? By controlling the above parameter we can get less distortion, good penetration, good bit shape welding. So, we have to know in details about the above parameters effect. So, that I will discuss uh, in subsequent slides one by one. The first of all welding current, yeah I have already discussed welding current means flow of electron actual flow of electron uh, through the gap of the arc. Generally what happens due to this uh, flow of electron generally what happens that welding current directly proportional with heat energy that we know. That means, what, what is what in heat energy or heat power? Generally, heat power we know that E into I, that we know. Generally, here generally this E means voltage, this we can represent generally, this E we can represent generally in terms of I into resistance of arc. 
So, generally if we just put this uh, e here i into r here and i then this power is actually represented as i square r. So, here generally what we observe this power is directly proportional to a square of the current here one things we can observe. So, welding power is directly proportional to around or heat energy generally heat energy rate generally directly proportional to the uh, square of the welding current that we can observe from here. So, for a given electrode and generally for a uh, and polarity in case of DC welding generally melting rate uh, we know that melting rate is directly proportional to this energy that means uh, this directly proportional to a square of this welding current because this depending upon this power generally heat is generating. This power generally whatever the power coming from electrode that means from power source to uh, base material here generally this total power or you can say this total heat power we can represented in terms of this six different six different uh, component. What is this six different component here you should know detail uh, little bit detail about this thing. Uh, this actually what happens where Q B generally whatever the heat is coming from electro uh, the uh, uh, coming from power source this heat generally some heat is going to uh, heat energy is going to or you can say heat power is going to base material this is generally base material heat this is generally some heat energy going to electrode that means some uh, because some heat energy is required to melt the base material some heat energy required to melt the what or what happens or melt, melt or heat the uh, electrode and this QCP and QCC represent the heat conduction in plate and heat conduction in electrode P, P represent for plate and heat as, uh, E represent for electrode. So, some heat is conducted to uh, electrode, some heat is conducted to plate and what is this Q V and uh, Q R, Q V represent the convection heat, uh, heat transfer rate and Q R represent the rate of radiation heat transfer. So, this is actually energy balance equation or, or, or what you can say in case of welding for a particular types of welding how the energy balance equation is coming. So, this energy generally all the heat energy how it is dissipating over the uh, welding region that it is representing. Here generally one things you can observe this whatever the heat energy you are getting this is generally uh, proportional to a square of the current and this R represent the arc resistance whatever the resistance you are getting resistance whatever the resistance in arc is there this R represent the resistance of the arc. So, from here generally we got the idea how the heat energy connected with uh, what it is connected with the current. So, from here itself you get the idea that means current has is the most important variable generally here the who is generally affecting the melting rate, the deposition rate, the depth of penetration and the base material melted. So, amount and the amount of base material melted. So, here one thing you keep it in mind this current is the most important variable here which affects most of the important part. Generally how it is what is this important part this effect is main effect if effect is on melting rate. Second effect is effect is in depth of penetration how the depth of penetration and all the things uh, its effect that I will discuss in uh, subsequential. Car the welding currents main effect is melting rate and depth of penetration. Depth of penetration means generally if the welding current is high, welding current high means what, what does it means? Welding current high means flow of electron is more over there. So, if the flow of electron more over there in case of DC E n electrode negative in case of DC E n generally if the flow of electron more is there or if in case of DCEP if the flow of electron more is there then what happens flow of current uh, that means flow of current more means flow of electron more. Flow of electron more means what happens bombardment force that means more current means more bombardment force uh, will be there. How this more bombardment force will be there that I have already discussed in force force different forces in welding arc. There we discuss there is generally one force is called radial force another of another one force is called radial force another force I actually I was discussed that another force is called axial force. In case of axial force 
generally the which generally create generally what happens uh, in case of axial force which generally create uh, turbulence effects in oil pool, oil pool region. So, higher the they are also I, I was discussing higher the this uh, this 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 force generally is uh, almost uh, directly proportional to a square of the current that also I was discussed. So, there the we observe this is also proportional to a square of the current. So, if the current is high this turbulence effect and all the things is increased due to this turbulence uh, effect or axial force effect generally what happens more penetration is uh, taken place. And uh, as, uh, as I have already discussed, this heat energy is also directly proportional to what it is called directly proportional to uh, a square of the current. So, if the current is more then heat energy also will be more. So, heat energy more means more material will be melted that means deposition rate also will be increased. Uh, this thing only represented here that means if the current is too high then what will be the result? The result will be here generally if the, if the current is too high then there will be excessive penetration what I have already told you why excessive penetration will be there because there is more forceful arc will be generated that is there will be more turbulence effect in, in the whirlpool. So, more penetration will be there in case of high current. So, what happens that is why high current generally in case of high current there is a chance to melt through in case of thinner material. So, high current generally is not preferable in thinner types of plate. So, second point is if the current is too high there will be excessive melting of electrode. So, there will be excessive reinforcement. This reinforcement what is excessive reinforcement you should know what is reinforcement. Reinforcement means generally if you do the welding you can say that bead shape generally become like this. So, above the surface of the base material generally some portion of the generally some portion of the material generally posited toward the surface of the base material. So, this portion generally called reinforcement, reinforce. So, this reinforcement generally what happens if the uh, melting rate will be more of the electrode then this reinforcement this reinforcement height generally will be more that means more material will be deposited toward the surface of the electrode. And here one thing you keep it in mind as the higher current result in higher penetration as well as higher melting rate that is why and higher current represents generally higher heat input. So, if the heat input will be higher then generally due to this high heat input there will, uh, there will be more distortion or more deformation of the welded plate. So, more heat input to plates being joined increase distortion of the welded plate. Now, if the current is too low that means, if the current is too low it will re it is a result will be opposite that means, here generally will be inadequate penetration here that means, whatever the penetration required that much of penetration will not, will not get. So, here generally less penetration will get. So, that is called inadequate penetration apart from this thing there can be lack of fusion. So, these two effect uh, it can create if the current is less. Now, here one thing you should keep it in mind generally compare that this current can be AC current alternating current or DC direct direct current. But always keep it in mind direct current is generally more preferable because generally it is provide a steady arc, a smooth metal transfer, good weighting action and uniform oil bead size generally DC current provide. So, so DC current is more preferable. So, from uh, effect of current what we observe this current's main effect is to increase the depth of penetration as well as generally what is what is called uh, melting rate of the material. So, main effect is generally depth of penetration current effect. So, higher the generally rates for thicker section for thicker section depth of penetration what does it means? Depth of penetration means the higher the current higher will be generally higher will be the depth of penetration that means, whatever the this this penetration depth penetration depth means this is generally fusion depth we can say how much material is melted inside the thickness of the uh, plate actually. This is general penetration depth. So, higher will be this forceful arc more penetration you can observe for, for that is why for thicker section generally what it is called high current is preferable because high penetration we can get. Now, we will go for other operating variables effect that is called another uh, operating variable this arc voltage. 
arc voltage uh, what I have already discussed arc voltage means the voltage difference between uh, voltage voltage difference or voltage between the electrode and workpiece. Arc voltage means whatever the voltage we got in this gap in this gap generally whatever the voltage we got this is generally called arc voltage or whatever the voltage we get in arc that is we called as welding voltage or arc voltage. So, arc voltage is the voltage between this uh, what it is called workpiece or job and electrode that I have already discussed. So, whatever the voltage is there this is called arc voltage or welding voltage. Here one thing you keep it in mind generally open circuit voltage generally to initiate this arc once we switch on the power source generally whatever the uh, whatever the what it is called voltage generally uh, supply from power source to uh, electrode uh, electrode that initially before starting the arc whatever the uh, voltage is there that is called open circuit voltage there there generally no arc is there at that, that, that time. So, generally this open circuit voltage range generally to initiate the arc is generally is higher than this arc voltage generally open circuit voltage varies between 50 to 100 volt that uh, we, uh, we have already discussed and generally this um, arc voltage whereas arc voltage varies between 15 volt to 40 volt in case of this uh, normal arc welding process. When this arc is stuck then what happens then the open circuit voltage drop to arc voltage and welding load come on power supply this you ke keep it in mind. So, generally when this open circuit voltage drop to arc voltage then this welding loads come on power supply and the welding voltage directly proportional to this directly proportional to arc length this the welding voltage generally directly proportional to arc length that we know how it is directly proportional generally we know generally resistance of arc arc resistance generally is proportional to uh, we know resistance of arc generally directly proportional to length of the arc and length of the uh, and uh, inversely proportional to cross circuit that is the general uh, rule actually from Ohm's law that we know. So, generally this arc voltage we can represent L by A. So, from here itself we can get and V is generally proportional to resistance of arc. So, this so here one thing you keep it in mind that welding voltage or arc voltage generally proportional to arc length. So, as the length increase arc resistance increase so, resulting in higher voltage drop that is higher arc voltage. Now, we will see what is the effect of this arc voltage, voltage related things you know actually. The main effect of arc voltage is on bit geometry generally, the arc voltage effects on bit geometry, arc voltage generally does not have significant effect on penetration like uh, uh, arc current or you can say welding current whatever the because current has effects on penetration, but arc voltage have effects on size that means generally weight width of the actual width of the bit shape generally especially how it is affecting that I will discuss uh, one by one. Generally proper arc length is impo important to obtain a sound well joint how generally one thing you keep it in mind if the arc is too short then what happens there is a chance of short short circuiting of uh, electrode with base material that type of chance can be there if it is too high that means too long that means long arc then this arc become unstable uh, there can be uh, the arc can be unstable as well as there there is generally too long arc lacks direction and intensity of the uh, arc. So, what happens due to this lack direction and intensity what happens it gives heavy spatter and formation of undercut this is the for long arc generally heavy spatter is occur and uh, there is occur some undercut what is this undercut undercut actually how it is look like it is a welding defect actually. So, undercut means undercut means that is let this is a this is the let let this is a well 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 bit. So, undercut means some sort of depression some sort of depression in well bit which is generally this depression lie beneath the surface of the work piece. So, this is actually a type of this is generally called undercut this is a defect of weld this is a generally defect of weld. So, these types of depression can come if the uh, arc is too long and uh, this 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 undercut can happen in case of long arc as well as 
it generally here wh what happens there can be spatter types of arc why spatter types of arc uh, spatter types of uh, molten material will be there because generally this molten droplets will fall from very high distance so once it fall down there can be some splashing out of molten material uh, outside this molten zone so that the, that can create some spatter types of deposition so so short arc and long arc we understand uh, so now here another main things of this arc voltage effect is on well bead appearance this bead appearance generally highly depends on what arc voltage how it is generally higher the arc voltage means higher will be the length of the arc now you see one thing you keep it in mind if let's this is a so 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 here one thing you keep it in mind here let's if this arc is a small then the arc, uh, if the if, if the, the, the arc length is a small let this is l1 l1 and if this if this arc length become high let this is l2 so in this case in this case you will get more spread more spread arc than shorter arc so here you will get a bit width of this mass if you increase the arc length then here due to the spread of this um, arc generally what happens here you will get wider bit shape wider bit shape because more arc area will be there due to this more car arc area there will be more flattening of the well bit is there now we can think sir then by increasing the arc length we can increase the well bit area as we uh, as much as we required but it is not like that if we increase more and more arc length then they are what i have already told you there can be instability of the arc as well as there can be lack direction as well as intensity can be there due to that things there is a limitation of arc gap there can be extinguishing of arc uh, also can be there because due to this less intensity and all the things there can be extinguishing of arc is also, also there and another things also you should know that after certain length of arc generally this arc instead of spread out it generally constrict why this is constrict there there can be occur some sub constriction of arc because that radial force and other thing that electromagnetic force and other thing this effects generally can be there so there can be constriction of arc also can be there so that's why generally higher and higher uh, arc gap is not good now uh, why it is not good generally higher the arc gap though increase the arc voltage but what happens there should be some limitation of arc gap should be there that's why generally uh, here one thing you keep it in mind generally trials are therefore made to obtain optimum arc length so before generally actual welding lot of trials are required there what should be the actual arc gap that means what should be the actual welding voltage it has observed that increase in the voltage tends to cause porosity what i have told you already that means a spatter and flatten the weld bit and increase weld width this what is weld width weld width means is this bead width you can say generally here itself from this diagram itself you can see generally from for a uh, for a 25 voltage for 35 voltage and 45 voltage how the weld bead shape varying for uh, keeping all other parameter constant if we change the if we increase the arc voltage how the bead shape varying here one thing we have seen generally here the change of uh, penetration that means change of penetration means this thing here to this depth of penetration depth of penetration is almost marginal you see this depth of penetration this depth of penetration generally one thing you can see it's marginal change but what happens with increase of voltage here generally this bead become flatter and its these beads wide become more and more that we can observe from here why it is that i have already discussed now here one things also you should uh, know that reduction in arc voltage that means in case of shorter arc length generally there can be narrower well bit which is like this narrower well bit and higher crown higher crown means this bead height this bead height can be higher side due to this uh, reduction in arc voltage so narrower the bit shape become narrower as well as higher crown will be there if the arc voltage is due to the reduction of the arc voltage now we got the idea what is the effect of arc voltage so arc voltage effect is on bit geometry especially bit width generally higher the arc voltage higher will be the bit width 
general its penetration effect is marginal uh, that we observe from here. Now, we will go what is the effect of welding speed? This welding speed is the generally uh, very interesting or important parameter which generally represent uh, that means, how much uh, heat will be supply per unit length that we can this idea we can get from welding speed. How you can you can represent this thing that I have already discussed you that is the heat supply per unit length is equal to uh, voltage into current divided by welding speed. This is generally called welding speed, welding speed. V w means welding speed. Generally, what you observe heat supply per unit length, this unit actually is the unit of this thing is joule per meter or joule per millimeter. So, from here we can see higher the welding speed, lower will be the heat supply per unit length. So, lower the welding speed, higher will be the heat supply per unit length. So, so, once we get this idea, then we will see what will be the its effect. Like, if the welding speed is more than what is required, that means, that means if the welding speed is high, here generally heat input to the joint per unit length will decrease. Definitely, if it is high, is w, Vw is high, then heat input will be decrease, this will be decrease. Then, due to this decrease of heat input, there will be less filler material deposition. So, due to this less filler material deposition, then uh, if the less filler material will be there, then uh, less reinforcement also, less, less from reinforcement height also you will get. Uh, apart from this thing, due to more uh, welding speed, there can be undercut, arc blow, pro city, uneven bit shape, these types of different different welding defect and the different different different, different uh, effect can occur over the welding zone. This actually undercut, porosity, uneven bit shape, these are all different welding defect. And arc bull I have already discussed about that higher the welding speed, generally there is a chance of higher arc bullo can be also there that I have already discussed in during arc bullo discussion. Now, if the welding speed is slow, if this is less, that means slow means if this is lower, this uh, Vw is less decrease, then this H will be increased. So, if H, H will be increased, then flare material deposition per length will increase. So, here you will get due to this more flare material deposition, more reinforcement you will get here. Here heat input per unit length also will increase due to this thing, because here H will increase due to lower this thing. Then, well, width and reinforcement height also increase here, well, uh, width as well as reinforcement height also increase. So, due to this here generally you we will get uh, more convexity types of uh, shape of bead due to this uh, low uh, slow speed of welding. Then here due to this slow speed of welding generally penetration decrease beyond certain decrease in speed, how it is that I will discuss. Here one thing you keep it in mind, you never think higher the depot, higher the heat input means higher the depth of penetration, not like that higher the depth because what happens higher the heat input that means for slower speed uh, generally does not uh, means that uh, penetration will increase and increase it has a limit after that limit generally penetration not increase that's why this point here it is written that penetration decrease beyond a certain decrease in speed after further decrease of that uh, further decrease of the welding speed that penetration does not affect how it is that i will discuss in next slide and here another thing you should keep it in mind due to this slow speed, a large oil pool rough bit possibility of slag inclusion also there due to this slow speed. Now, we will see this penetration generally this penetration uh, that is why generally we should decide our uh, optimum welding speed also. Because what happens for a particular welding, uh, for a particular welding speed generally we can get optimum penetration. That speed is generally intermediate speed, it is not either very high or it is not uh, is very less. It is generally is, uh, within some intermediate uh, intermediate speed, we get we get generally what is called uh, more high penetration. Now, uh, why this is happen? Because at excessively because if we decrease the speed uh, again and again, so at excessively low welding speed what happens? The arc strike a large molten pool. Definitely what happens if the welding speed will be low, then what happens volume of molten material will be uh, high at a particular location. Due to this volume of molten material, generally the penetrating force get cushioned by this uh, 
molten pool because here whatever the penetration force is coming uh, over the molten pool that molten pool generally cushion that forces. Uh, due to that things what happens here uh, generally further penetration cannot increase. That is why it is penetration that when after certain lowering of welding speed generally penetration further does not increase. So, that that is why here generally, penet uh, generally optimum penetration we got uh, at some intermediate speed. Now, here another things you should remember with increase with excessively high welding speed generally there is a substantial drop in thermal energy per unit length because that you know if the welding speed is uh, uh, very high then what we got this heat input per unit length will decrease tremendously. So, there is a substantial drop in thermal energy per unit length of the weld joint is there due to the substantial reduction of welding heat input what happens there is a chance of lack of well material deposition can be there. Due to that things what happens there can be undercutting along the edge of the well bit. Why this undercutting is there? This undercutting it is because of insufficient backflow of flour material to fill the path melted by the arc. This is due to insufficient backflow of flour material that means whatever the material required to backflow to fill the path melted by arc that sufficient filler material is not backflow if the speed is high. So, here one thing you keep it in mind welding speed is to be adjusted within limit to control weld size and depth of penetration. Now, we will see what is the effect of electrode feed speed then we will go for what is the effect of electrode extension and finally, we will discuss what is the effect of electrode diameter effect. So, first of all we will see what is the effect of electrode feed rate what I have already discussed. Electrode feed rate means if the electrode feed rate will be more then what happens then deposition rate will be more because feed rate more means more material will supply to the work piece. So, here generally that is why here electrode feed rate determines the amount of metal deposited per unit length per unit time. Generally in most of the welding machine generally depending upon this welding uh, feed rate the current is adjust adjusted. So, what happens in most of the welding machine the welding current adjusts itself with electrode feed speed to maintain generally proper arc length that I have already discussed generally that is called self regulation characteristics of arc in most welding machine generally that types of characteristic generally used. Now, we will discuss about electrode extension what is the effect of electrode extension this is a very important parameter which have significant effect on deposition rate, bit shape and all the things. How it is that I will now discuss. Generally electrode extension this is also known as length of stick out that I have already discussed. this is generally what this is generally called contact tube contact tube and generally above this contact tube here generally this is called arc this is called arc that means electrode tip to work piece whatever the root gap is uh, whatever the gap is there that is called arc gap or here generally arc is created that is arc that we know and this contact tube tip to arc till arc whatever the length of electrode extended out that is called length of stick out. This is called length of stick out LSO that we can write. So, length of stick out generally is the extension of electrode coming out from electrode tip to uh, electrode generally uh, uh, coming out from contact tube tip to uh, arc position. So, here this is generally called uh, length of stick out. Here one thing you keep it in mind generally if this length of stick out increase then what happens uh, length of stick out result in increase of electric electrical resistance because this length of stick out if it is more then what happens here electrical resistance also will be more because from this contactive like arc 
if the arc gap is more there generally there is uh, arc resistance is more similarly if this length of stick out will be more more resistance will be will be there so due to this more resistance this causes resistance heating of the electrode extended extended length in this electrode extended length in this L A S O here generally resistance heating will be there resistance heating will be there resistance heating will be there due to this resistance heating here additional heat generation will be there and increase of electrode melting rate will be there. So, higher will be this length of stick out higher will be the melting will be there. Now, for a particular power generally what happens due to this resistance heating of the uh, resistance heating of this extended electrode here generally power will be uh, consumed by this resistant heating portion. So, for a particular power supply from this power source here some portion of heat is consumed by this uh, resistance heating of electrode. So, rest of the heat generally supplied to work due to this thing what happens the energy so consumed reduce the power deli uh, delivered to the arc thus decrease the bead width and penetration depth. So, what happens here this total uh, so here total generally whatever the total power let us total power is q t this is generally representing uh, to uh, resistance heating of the electrode extension and it is some portion is uh, rest of the portion is going to arc Il, uh, here I am representing q a arc. So, as this from this total uh, total uh, heat, heat supply some portion is consumed by this resistance heating. So, this q a arc heat energy generally or arc uh, intensity of heat uh, arc heat energy generally decrease. So, q a decrease due to this q a decrease here generally less forceful arc will be there and due to this less forceful arc generally here generally penetration depth will will be decrease. Uh, so, so, so due to these things penetration depth will be decreased, wide penetration depth will decrease due to less power delivered to the arc due to resistance heating of the extended portion of the electrode. Now, the generally here one thing should keep it in mind generally at current level above 125 ampere per millimeter square that is current density above uh, 125 ampere per millimeter this el electrode extension become very important, this becomes generally very, very important because if this current density is more than this then this uh, electrode extension will be uh, beneficial because what happens generally above this current density we can utilize for uh, burn off or uh, resistance heating of this electrode. Generally by resistance heating of the electrode generally uh, we can increase the deposition rate around 50 percent by without changing any current uh, generally without changing or without increasing the current value uh, generally an increase of 50 percent deposition can be achieved by using log, long uh, electrode extension without increasing the welding current. This increase in deposition rate whatever the increase in deposition rate is uh, there this is generally accompanied with decrease with depth of penetration because here some heat is consuming. So, less power is coming to work. So, less uh, penetration will be there. Then another thing thus here one thing you keep it in mind when the deep penetration is desired long electrode extension is not preferable over there. So, there generally long length of stick house is not desirable. So, when depth of penetration required is more there should be shorter length of stick out. And another thing you should keep it in mind for thinner plate generally to avoid possibility of melting through a long electrode extension is more beneficial. Now, the last uh, parameter that is called electrode diameter which have also effect this electrode uh, extension electrode diameter also significant effect on bit configuration, penetration and deposition rate. Why we generally electrode diameter means what the electrode let this is on electrode if the electrode diameter this is this is another electrode diameter. So, here one thing you should remember. So, so electrode diameter if the electrode diameter is increase generally what happens then current density will decrease definitely current density will decrease. So, generally what happens if current density will decrease then uh, less forceful arc will be generated that is why here one thing we should keep it in mind for a particular current for lower diameter electrode generally we can get more 
forceful arc than higher diameter electrode. That is why for lower diameter electrode generally for a particular current we can get more penetration. This is one important point. Apart from this thing for a particular current generally um, due to this high uh, intensity or high current density they are generally melting rate also will be more. So, for a particular current for lower diameter generally we can get more uh, melting rate of uh, filler material than higher diameter of electrode. So, that is why a large di and another thing here you should keep it in mind a large diameter electrode however require a higher minimum current to achieve the same metal transfer characteristic. That means, for a particular metal transfer characteristics means for a let us for a particular spray types of metal transfer whatever the current required for lower diameter electrode this current requirement will be higher for uh, to get the similar types of uh, spray types of metal transfer for higher diameter electrode definitely that should be there. The, thus, larger electrode will produce higher deposition rate at higher current generally. So, to get higher deposition by larger diameter electrode here current level we should increase. Here one thing you should keep it in mind in case of poor fit up or generally thick plate welding larger electrode size is better to bridge large root opening than smaller ones. Just that is why for poor fit up and thick plate generally larger well, uh, electrode diameter is preferable. Here we are showing what is the effect of uh, this is effect of this uh, electrode diameter on bit geometry of the uh, bit geometry of the uh, of the welded sample. Here this is showing uh, generally keeping all other parameter constant if we increase the electrode diameter here one thing you can see uh, this depth of penetration and it is uh, what it is called depth of penetration and it is bit geometry how it is bearing from this figure you can easily get. That means, lower diameter generally uh, for same current and all uh, we get uh, generally comparatively more penetration here generally for higher diameter for keeping same uh, these things we get less penetration, but here we get wider bit geometry because wider bit geometry why wider bit geometry because what happens here less forceful arc, but what happens uh, there can be due to this thing uh, less forceful arc there can be due to larger diameter this molten droplet uh, deposition can be higher side. This figure you can get this idea. So, this all about the effect of different operating uh, parameter on well quality that means overall quality of welding in details. Next lecture I will discuss about the different welding processes. In first lecture I will discuss uh, about the oxy fuel uh, gas welding techniques then subsequently I will go to different arc welding techniques. Mm -hmm.